गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज आई एम प्रोफेसर पंचभाई फ्रॉम के कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग आवर टूडे टॉपिक इज एफिशिएंसी ऑफ स्पायर गेयर वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर स्पायर गेयर ओके इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन सी देर आर टू गेयर्स आर शोन हुज लाइन डायग्राम इज शोन ओनली टॉप यू लाइन डायग्राम वेयर ओके दिस होरिजेंटल वन इज गेयर नंबर वन विच इज द स्पायर गेयर और ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज एन अ ड्राइवर एंड टू दैट गेयर one of the uh, fish circle diameter which has been drawn at some uh, inclination that is a spiral gear or a driven gear number 2 the both the gears are intersecting at point pitch point p okay what uh, how the spiral gear uh, are connected together the spiral gear axis are non parallel and non intersecting okay they are not parallel to each other the power transmission from gear 1 to the gear one is non parallel and non intersecting the gears are non parallel and non intersecting so it mean you are transmitting the power in such a way that in case of a sp uh, spur gear the gears are parallel to each other in case of helical or gear also the gears are parallel to each other. gear x gear mean the sense a gear axis are parallel to each other okay now for the gear number 1 perpendicular to the shaft uh, sorry perpendicular to this gear so this is the axis number 1 this is the axis number 2 you can see the gears are and they are at certain distance to each other so they are not parallel to and also not intersecting from another view you can see that okay then this is the axis number shaft axis number 1 this is the shaft axis number 2 okay where you can so i uh, have in this diagram i have shown some force diagram okay what are the different forces are acting on to the gear number 1 which is the driver gear and on this side what are the different forces are acting on the gear number 2 okay along perpendicular to the shaft axis there is a tangential force which is used to drive the gear okay input gear and same way Uh, perpendicular to the axis number 2 uh, gear tangential force number 2 in this direction okay then to this tangential force line of action of a tangential force i am supposed to draw one normal from the pitch point which is making an angle of alpha 1 with respect to the tangential force line of action means the to the line of uh, tangential force line of action of a tangential force i had drawn one common normal which is passing through the pitch point from bo bo for both the sides okay for gear number 1 in this direction normal force and which is uh, extending that same line over there to the gear for gear number 2 it is a normal reaction force okay vector vector for a normal reaction and what will be the angle between tangential force and a normal reaction it is always a helix angle or a spiral angle in case of a spiral gear okay similarly this is a notation for alpha 1 when it is related to gear number 1 and this will be the alpha 2 that is an, an angle between the tangential force and a normal force that is alpha 2 over here you can see that okay so these are the two forces okay then tangential force is not the only force acting onto the gear there is along with that there is axial force for the gear number 1 and gear number 2 okay so axial force and this axial force and tangential force give me the resultant force okay resultant force of will give, what is the resultant force value it will be a summation of a tangential force and axial force okay and this resultant force will be always making an angle of phi that is a frictional angle with respect to the normal force along the line of action of a normal force this is on net in line of action of normal force means this is a common normal drawn at the pitch point okay this is a common this line is nothing but eg okay eg e e to g for e with respect to the gear number e so gear number 1 and for g with respect to the gear number 2 so this line is g g is representing in a common normal and to that common normal if i want to draw a line at an angle of frictional force this is nothing but a resultant this resultant is obtained from the tangential force and axial force axial force for the gear number 1 will be parallel to the axis of the gear number 1 okay similarly axial force for the gear number 2 will be parallel to the axis shaft axis of the gear number 2 over here bd represent me the axial force and ac represent me the axial force of the gear number 1 and bd represent me the axial force of the gear number 2 if i extend if i draw a uh, resultant at an angle of phi with respect to the normal common normal which is not, nothing but a eg in this case so this is representing me the resultant this resultant is extended along in the for the gear number 2 so in this case pd is repre representing me the resultant and in this case pc is representing me the resultant so these are the forces acting on this spiral gear okay where alpha 2 is representing the angle of spiral angle for the gear number 2 alpha 1 is representing me the spiral angle for the gear number 
one that is a driver and phi is the friction angle present between the common normal and a resultant okay now next diagram in this diagram okay what i had run i had drawn one more line which will be perpendicular to the resultant this resultant cd is over there okay to that sorry cg sorry sorry yes yes sorry uh huh yes to that result perpendicular to the resultant resultant is c and d sorry cd yes this one is i got a mistake over there cd this cd perpendicular to the resultant this one i had drawn a normal line okay now from the figure you can see perpendicular to the tangential force is the axis of the shaft okay and angle between the tangential force and a normal okay that is a alpha one okay now perpendicular to the tangential force is the axis of the shaft and perpendicular to the normal is this line which i have been drawn right now so angle between the axis of the shaft and a line drawn perpendicular to the resultant is similar to the alpha one you can see over there i have drawn perpendicular to this one ap i had drawn this one and perpendicular to this p i had drawn this two line so similar it means that i have shifted the alpha one value that is spiral angle values uh, or rotated the spiral angle along with an angle of 90 degree similarly just and similar to that one the angle alpha 2 that is the spiral angle alpha 2 is present between the tangential force and normal that is alpha 2 and i had drawn a line this is the shaft axis which is perpendicular to the ft2 and this is the line which is perpendicular to the resultant so angle between the resultant perpendicular to the resultant and perpendicular to uh, to the tangential but that is nothing but a shaft axis is nothing but a alpha 2 that is a spiral angle for the gear number 2 and if you look at the figure alpha 1 and alpha 2 okay this is making some angle what is this angle this is if i denote it with the help of a theta what is this theta this theta is nothing but theta will be equivalent to something alpha 1 plus alpha 2 in this case so what is the theta if you look at the diagram very well so this is the angle between the two shaft axis that is axis number 1 and axis number 2 so this is called as an a shaft angle and right now in this case it is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 are you getting me okay this one is over then furthermore i have extended this figure in such a way that i have considered the triangle a p c okay angle a p e is alpha 1 angle c p e is phi so what is the remaining angle a p and c this angle is equal to alpha 1 minus this value phi so it can be equivalent to alpha 1 minus phi okay this remaining angle a p and c total is alpha 1 the uh, next one is phi so the first part is nothing but alpha 1 minus phi and similarly for a driven gear okay this angle i am talking about a triangle b p d b p and d the first angle is b p g is alpha 2 and b p sorry uh, g p d that is a phi and if i take a total angle b p d it becomes alpha 2 plus phi what is this angle this angle is nothing but angle between the tangential force and resultant in or in this case also tangential force and resultant the angle between tangential force and resultant i have shown you over here with the help of uh, this diagram okay so the angle for the uh, spir uh, sp uh, spiral gear or a dri uh, driver gear the angle between the tangential force and resultant one is alpha 1 minus phi and for a driven gear it will be alpha 2 plus phi now moving for it in triangle apc if i consider the triangle apc a p and c what are the forces are there ft1 and resultant if i want to make a find a relation between tangential force and resultant can i find out relation between them yes ft1 will be equivalent to some in terms of a cos function of this angle so i can write an ft1 is equal to r in, in terms of r into cos of alpha 1 minus phi because this is perpendicular angle is this one this is a relation between adjacent upon hypotenuse so from that i am getting the value of tangential force is equal to r into cos of alpha 1 minus phi from the figure in the previous from the previous figure that is okay so 
एफ टी वन इज इक्वल टू आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा माइनस फाइव अल्फा वन माइनस फाइव ओके ना वॉट इज द पावर इनपुट पावर इनपुट इज नथिंग बट टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इन टू द पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी सो इनपुट पावर कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एज एन टेंजेंशियल फोर्स एफ टी वन इनपुट पावर इनपुट टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इन टू पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी ऑफ होम अ इनपुट गेयर अ ड्राइविंग गेयर सो एफ टी वन इन टू वी वन कैन आई राइट ऑन वी वन दैट इज ए पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ पाइडेन बाई सिक्सटी सो आई राइट ऑन जस्ट सिंपली राइट ऑन द वेलॉसिटी वैल्यू पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी ओके और वी मे से दैट आर ऑल्सो रोलिंग वेलॉसिटी दैट इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ पाइडेन बाई सिक्सटी सो एफ टी वन टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इन टू टू पाइडेन सिक्सटी वन सेकेंड आई कैन रिप्लेस द टेंजेंशियल वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ रिजल्ट आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा वन माइनस फाइव सो ओर हियर इनपुट पावर इज इक्वल टू आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा वन माइनस फाइव फ्रॉम ओर हियर इन टू पाई डी एन बाय सिक्सटी दिस इज फॉर इनपुट पावर ओके फॉर आउटपुट पावर फॉर आउटपुट पावर वॉट आई टू डू आई हैव टू कंसिडर द रिजल्ट रिजल्ट फॉर आउटपुट गेयर एंड टेंजेंशियल फोर फॉर द आउटपुट गेयर सो आई हैव टू कंसिडर द ट्राइंगल बी पी डी वॉट इज विद रिलेशन बिटवीन इन ट्राइंगल बी पी डी टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इज इक्वल टू वंस अगेन कॉस ऑफ दिस इज अट नाइंटी डिग्री सो एफ टी दैट इज अ टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इक्वल टू आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव सो दैट विल बी टेंजेंशियल फोर्स आउटपुट टेंजेंशियल फोर्स एफ टी टू इक्वल टू आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव सो आउटपुट पावर विल बी वंस अगेन टेंजेंशियल फोर्स इन टू द पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी फॉर द आउटपुट गेयर ओके सो एफ टी टू वंस अगेन आई एम रिप्लेसिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ पीच लाइन वेलॉसिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ पाई डी एन बाय सिक्सटी जस्ट हैव अ नोटेशन टू टू सो दैट इट इज फॉर ड्राइ ड्रीवन गेयर सॉरी इट इज अ ड्रीवन ड्राइवर गेयर इज ओरियन ओके सो वन सेकेंड रिप्लेसिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ आर इन टर्म्स आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव सो आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव इन टू पाई डी टू एन टू डी टू एन टू रिप्रेजेंट मीटर पीस सर्कल डाई मीटर एंड आर पी एम ऑफ गेयर नंबर टू ओके देन एपिशेंसी वॉट इज एपिशेंसी एपिशेंसी इज नथिंग बट आउटपुट पावर ऑफ ऑन इनपुट पावर सो ओर यर आई है रिटर्न डाउन द एपिशेंसी इक्वल टू आउटपुट पावर ऑफ ऑन इनपुट पावर एंड दिस वैल्यूज हैव बीन रिप्लेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव इन टू पाई डी एन पाई डी टू एन टू बाय सिक्सटी ओके फॉर आउटपुट पावर एंड इनपुट पावर आर इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा वन माइनस फाइव इन टू पाई डी एन बाय सिक्सटी डी वन 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 रिप्रेजेंटिंग फॉर द गेयर नंबर वन ओर यर आर आर गेट कैंसर ओके वॉट इज ए सिक्सटी बाय सिक्सटी इज गेटिंग कैंसर वॉट यू आर गेटिंग द एपिशेंसी विल बी इन सिंपली इन टर्म्स ऑफ डी टू एन टू इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा टू प्लस फाइव अपॉन डी वन एन वन इन टू कॉस ऑफ अल्फा वन माइनस फाइव ओर यर यू कैन फाइंड आउट नो सिंगल फोर्स इज ओवर देयर फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एपिशेंसी अदरवाइज पावर इज देयर बट पावर हैज बीन रिप्लेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ सम डायमेंशन दैट इज पी सर्कल डायमीटर डी टू एन टू डी टू डी वन एंड एन टू एन वन दैट इज आर पी एम ओके एंड अल्फा वन एंड अल्फा टू एंड फाइव अल्फा वन एंड अल्फा टू इज नथिंग बट द स्पायरल एंगल फॉर द गेयर वन एंड टू एंड फाइव इज द फ्रिक्शन एंगल फॉर द दैट गेयर सो सिंपली इन राइट नाउ इन दिस केस यू कैन फाइंड आउट देर इज नो सिंगल फोर्स प्रेजेंट टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ एपिशेंसी बट स्टिल आई हैव टू रिप्लेस दिस साइज ऑल्सो साइज मीन्स अ डी टू डी वन एंड एन टू एन वन आई हैव टू रिमूव दिस पार्ट वॉट सो वॉट शुड आई डू ओके आई नो वन रिलेशन वॉट इज दैट the normal module for the meshing gear meshing of to when two gears are mesh together they have a normal module and they will have the same normal module unless and until they are not going to mesh okay when two gears are meshing they will have the same no, normal module so normal module is equal to and relation between normal module and transverse module is also known to me we have seen in case of helical gear okay or also in case of while discussing the terminology of spiral gear also we know that the normal module is equal to transverse module into the cos of helix angle or a spiral angle so transverse module for the gear number 1 into cos of alpha 1 is equal to transverse module of a gear number 2 into cos of alpha 2 so simply mt1 into cos of alpha 1 is equal to mt2 into cos of alpha 2 what is the transverse module transverse module is nothing but d by t or d by z means what piece circle it is a ratio of piece circle diameter to the number of teeth on that gear it is a ratio of mt2 piece circle diameter of the gear to the number of teeth so i am just replacing the value of mt1 and mt2 by d1 by z1 and d2 by z2 respectively so what i am getting mn equal to d1 cos alpha 1 by z1 equal to d2 cos alpha 2 upon z2 related to the gear number 2 now 
I can rearrange this equation about equ this equation so that I will have d1 on one side and d2 on another side. So if I re rearrange this equation d1 will be equal to mn into z1 upon cos alpha 1 and for this one d2 so it will be equal to mn into z2 upon cos alpha 2. So equation number 2. What I am getting d1 and d 2s values in terms of mn z1 cos alpha 1 and mn z2 cos alpha 2. Okay. Now I am putting these values d1 and d2 or other before that also I will take divide equation number 2 by equation number so so I will have a d2 by d1 ratio is over there on left hand side. Okay. So what will be the values if I am replacing d2 dividing d2 by d1 equation 2 by equation 1. So what I am getting mn z2 cos alpha 2 upon mn z1 cos alpha 1 where mn mn get cancelled what I am getting z2 the cos alpha 1 which is at the numerator denominator side will be go on a with along with the z2 so I am getting a new equation z2 into cos alpha 1 upon z1 into cos alpha 2 okay what is this this is the value of d2 by d1 equal to so final value of d2 by d1 equal to z2 cos alpha 1 upon z1 cos alpha 2 but what is the requirement my requirement is d2 by d1 along with n2 by n1 it means that d2 by d1 is not only the uh, requirement along with that n2 by n1 is required so i have find out the values of d2 by d1 okay but what is required along with n2 by n1 so i am multiplying n2 by n1 on both the side for this equation so for this equation i am multiplying both side by n2 by n1 so then finally i will have d2 n2 upon d1 n1 so what will be the value it will be a z1 cos alpha 1 upon z2 uh, sorry z2 cos alpha 1 upon z1 cos alpha 2 this is the value from this equation into multiplying n2 by n1 on both sides n2 by n1 okay so this is the value of d2 n2 upon d1 n1 is equal to z2 cos alpha 1 into n2 upon z1 cos alpha 2 into n1 okay this is the total value which is supposed to be replaced in this equation before that what i have to go i know that gear ratio gear ratio is nothing but is equal to number of teeth on driver driven gear upon number of teeth on driven gear output gear number of teeth on output gear upon number of teeth on input gear is equal to input speed upon output speed in terms of a speed is it input input speed upon output speed and in terms of a number of teeth output teeth upon input teeth so if i make so therefore i can make a cross multiplication of this one and from that one z2 into n2 is equal to z1 into n1 so z2 into n2 equal to z1 into n1 over here z2 into n2 and is equal to z1 n1 so i can this is nothing but a 1 and equal to z2 n2 and z1 n1 getting cancelled to each other what is remaining only d2 by d2 n2 upon d1 n1 is simply equal to cos of alpha 1 by cos of alpha 2 that is the only value which is remaining over there so putting the values of d2 by d2 n2 upon d1 n1 is equal to cos of alpha 1 by alpha 2 the new efficiency equation will be equivalent to cos of alpha 1 upon cos of alpha 2 into cos of alpha 2 plus phi upon cos of alpha 1 minus phi so if you look at the equation you will find out the whole values of efficiency is in terms of a spiral angle for the driver and driven gear along with the helix angle uh, sorry helix angle also uh, friction angle okay so cos of alpha 1 into cos of alpha 2 plus phi upon cos of alpha 2 into cos of alpha 1 minus phi this is a final equation for efficiency of equation once again we can modify it by using a trigonometric formula is that is one of the trigonometric formula for a cos function is cos of a into cos of b is equal to half of cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b this formula if i apply this formula for treating alpha 1 as a, a and alpha 2 plus phi as a b for numerator and alpha 2 as a, a and alpha 1 minus phi as a b for a denominator then i am having equation will be like will be converted into the 1 by 2 into cos of a plus b alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus phi that is a plus b alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus phi and it plus cos of a minus b so cos of alpha 1 minus of b this b alpha 2 minus phi that is the numerator side and denominator side a is alpha 2 and b is alpha 1 minus 4 phi so half of 
cos of a plus b so a alpha 2 plus alpha 1 minus pi that is a plus b and cos of alpha 1 that is alpha 2 minus alpha 1 minus pi so minus pi will be equal to plus pi And final equation will be equivalent to cos of theta plus phi. What is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 in this case? In the previous case, we have seen that it is a theta, that is a shaft angle. So, we are going to replace the this value with the help of theta. Alpha 1 plus alpha 2 or alpha 2 plus alpha 1. So, we are getting the equation cos of theta plus phi, cos of alpha 1 minus alpha 2 minus phi. And if you are rearranging this equation and cos of alpha is equal to cos of minus alpha, both the same value. If I introduce negative values over there, you will have cos of theta plus phi plus cos of alpha 1 minus alpha 2 minus phi upon cos of theta minus phi alpha 2 plus phi is equal to theta minus phi plus cos of alpha 1 minus alpha 2 minus phi because theta is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2.